More reaction to what the Chancellor has been saying uh, with the Labour MP Tulip Sadiq, who is the Shadow Economic Secretary to the Treasury. A very good morning to you. Thank you very much for being with us. Good morning. Um, well, what um, Jeremy Hunt has been saying is that these figures show that actually um, our economy is more resilient than many people had feared and also that we've got the fastest growth in the G7. He's painting a very upbeat picture. I mean, if the situation wasn't so dire, I would be laughing at his attempts to mask up the reality of the situation. The reality of the situation is that my constituents cannot afford to buy basic food items like eggs, milk, bread, because of the situation we're in. The reality of the situation is that we have just narrowly missed being in a recession. And that's the technical phrase of being in a recession. And the reality of the situation is that we've had stagnant growth for the last six months last year of the economy. We are the smallest economy, we're the only economy that hasn't recovered um, post-COVID in any of the countries in the G7. So why Jeremy Hunt is talking in such an upbeat tone, I don't know. But I do know constituents are feeling the pinch. I do know that we are an economy that has not recovered after COVID. I do know the IMF have predicted that this year we will have the lowest growth of any country in the G7. Well, well, he's, but that is what he's saying is that in terms of the G7, we've had the fastest growth. Now, um, maybe it's a statistical sleight of hand because this is a comparison um, with pre-COVID levels, isn't it? But, uh, but uh, I mean, that's still statistically correct, whether you like it or not. It can't be the figures for last year, because the figures for last year, um, there are two countries that still haven't provided the figures for Q4. So the statistic that he's talking about can't be for the year just gone. I I'm 100% sure of that. But I think he needs to look for the fact that why is the IMF saying, why is the OECD saying that out of the G7, we'll have no growth this year. Why are we in a situation where the growth rate for our country has been 0.0% I mean, is that something to boast about? OK, so how would Labour change that? How would Labour increase growth? Because what the Chancellor's been saying is that inflation is still a central concern. Uh, what would you do, A, to tackle inflation and B, to boost growth? Look, there's no doubt about the fact that external factors have played a role in the fact that our economy is fragile. There's no doubt about that. But the truth is that we were uniquely exposed to shocks because we didn't prepare. And when you're asking about Labour's plan, the main thing we're asking for is a proper plan for growth in the budget that is coming next month. So we've asked over and over again but for the I'm government you... to strengthen the windfall tax. So this is a short-term Right now, we need this to help people who are struggling to make ends meet, who don't have enough money. They are worried that the energy bills will go up even higher in April. So we're asking in the budget to strengthen the windfall tax. I know you're going to say they've already bought in the windfall tax, but it's not the windfall tax mm. that we suggested. The one that we suggested would bring in £13 billion. We're saying backdate it to January 2022, which is when the Labour Party first asked for it, we're asking for oil and gas rates to be taxed as the same rate as in Norway. We're asking them to close a loophole that currently exists in terms of fossil fuel allowance. And if uh, they do all of that, strengthen the windfall tax, they will get £13 billion, which we can then help our constituents reduce their energy bills in April. OK, but the I ask thing... you, forgive me, but I asked you for your plan for growth. I mean, a windfall tax is not really a plan for growth, is it? What is your plan for growth? Because you said the government doesn't doesn't have one. That implies you have got one. What is it? Uh, we do have a plan for growth. We've talked about it continuously. We have lots of things. I mean, I can start on all of them if you want. Well, we just, want to just give us in a policies. nutshell, we in a nutshell, a, give us the headlines. We're, we're talking about clean power by 2030. We want to talk about investing £28 billion when it comes to our green industries. We've talked about a value for m money in terms of an office that we will create to make sure that taxpayers' money is not wasted. We've talked about upskill Britain, where we want to look at how we include skills to meet the challenges of the new century and make sure regional inequality is addressed. We've talked about investment in fintech because we think that's a key way of addressing regional inequality that exists. We've talked about looking at our childcare system because we've seen so many people can't go back to work because we haven't 
sorted out the high costs of childcare. We've talked about the fact that we will generate money into the state school education system by removing the VAT exemption on private schools. Okay. So there's a list of things, our industrial strategy, which you've probably seen. We're putting out proper policies which we want to make sure the economy is firing, firing on all cylinders and make sure we're on the plan to growth. What we haven't from the heard from the Conservatives is a single idea of how they're going to grow the economy. OK, let me They've just ask you eight... finally, can I just ask you finally about inflation, which the, the Chancellor said is the central concern, economic concern at the moment. What would be Labour's plan to tackle that? And, and the government have said they can't afford to pay public sector and other workers more money because that would be inflationary. Do you agree with that position? We have to see when we come into government, hopefully if we win the next election, what the situation of the economy is. But I don't think you can keep blaming just inflation for the fact that our country is so uniquely exposed to all the factors that have happened. I mean, why are we the only country, I go back to this stat, in the G7 that hasn't got the economy back to the pre-COVID levels? Other countries have had external shocks as well. They've had to deal with inflation as well. But we've done worse than other countries. In terms of public sector workers that you say, my the main problem, and I'll say this over and over again, no one goes on a strike on a whim. People strike because it is the last resort and they have no other option. They okay, are undervalued, would you pay, would you underpaid, pay them more? and condition works are terrible. What we would do is get people round the table and negotiate some sort of deal that both sides are happy with. And I genuinely think if you're running the country as grown-ups, as adults, you should be able to get round the table and speak to people, speak to people and say, what are your demands and let's see how much money we can pay and try and reach a compromise. Okay. Of course, not every side is going to be happy. But the fact is, Steve Barkley ignored calls from the health unions all summer and didn't speak to them. And that's why we're in this situation, because they won't speak to each other and we can't reach a compromise. The Labour Party would not be doing that. Okay. We would be sitting around a table, talking to them, reaching some sort of solution. In 13 years of yeah, a Labour said... government, we never had a strike in the NHS. OK, Tulip Sadiq, thank you so much for your time. Uh, Shadow Economic Secretary to the Treasury, thank you very much for being with us.